Okay, hi, yes, Kristen, thanks so much. Um, so my name is John DiMartino, I am from New York and I have been here at the Studio Works Artist in Residency Program for going on three weeks. God, time flies when you're having fun, right? Um, so uh, I'm a photographer um, from New York and I am making tintypes here uh, during my residency. Um, so tintypes, um, I am using the wet plate collodion photography process invented in the 1850s from Frederick Scott Archer. Um, and I'm making tintypes using my large format view camera. And so I proposed a project to Studio Works um, to document local crafts, people, artists, et cetera, folks who are working uh, with their hands to make things. Um, I felt that uh, I was in Maine a few years ago and the amount of people in Maine that are making things, uh, artists, wood carvers, um, sculptors, potters, uh, stained glass makers, woodworkers, uh, especially woodworkers, really impressed me when I was here. And I, I also came across um, during the wet plate period, um, occupational tintypes were prevalent. Folks uh, who worked uh, would go to the studio, their photography studio with um, their tools of their trade and have their image made. And those images always resonated with me. I felt like they told a story and I like tools and wet plate um, tintypes, you are working with your hands. Um, and I like that aspect of tintypes. I like tinkering. I make my own chemistry, my own emulsions and I also, you know, varnish, black varnish my own plates, which is a little different than other folks. And that was my project. So it's been going great. Um, uh, Christine gave me a contact and I kind of took it from there. And I have so far uh, shot uh, two or three um, artists uh, in the neighborhood here in Eastport. Um, and uh, it was, it's been fantastic. Um, besides getting to know them, I, I would honestly call them friends at this point. I spent so much time with, with some of the people around here. And one challenge was I don't have a studio. I shoot with uh, a studio for shooting, that is. Um, I have studio space here at the, uh, uh, during the residency. But um, the challenge, one of the challenges has been um, I shoot with natural light. So going to see these artists in their studios where they create their work, um, there hasn't been enough light. So my images I'm very happy with, and, and I think I've captured some, some really interesting stuff, but I was not able to shoot them in place, so to speak, because the exposures would be too long and it just, there wasn't enough light. But putting that aside, uh, it, it was excellent. Uh, I met with a sculptor named Dick Cliver and it was like I, a meeting I'll never forget how much fun we had. It was just such a great experience. What an interesting person and so generous with his time and welcoming and, and it was just fantastic. And then I met with the wood carver, um, Roland, again, went to shoot him multiple times. He was always, oh, sure, whatever you need, just let me know, whatever you want, no problem. Oh, if you want to come and shoot around my house too. And it was, it was excellent. And then, and then just enjoying so much of Eastport and, and the local scenery, I also became mesmerized with the piers and the pilings and the waterfront. And so I started shooting um, all on the water, uh, everything, if up and down, running around, taking my camera all over town. Um, yeah, and it, it's just been excellent. I came up here with the mindset that I want to work. 
You know, I came up here to 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 make a body of work, and I just jumped right in. Um, and 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 I'm really proud of the work that I've made. Uh, I wish I had another month. Um, there's still so much more to shoot around here with all the folks telling me, "Oh, you should talk to so and so," and "You should go down to this cove at low tide," and and it's really like endless. So um, that's kind. Of Unless you want me to cover something else. No, I think I think seeing some of these images is going to help yeah. folks see. Yeah. So this this is um this this worked out really well in my opinion. This is a perfect example. Roland uh, is a wood carver, crow tracks, um, a very very interesting person making beautiful beautiful wood carvings like phenomenal, and he's got a beautiful little studio. And, and it just wasn't enough light to shoot in there. He would have had to hold still for 45 seconds. And so we took his stuff outside. So that's the uh, his chopping block where where he um, where he makes his starts chopping up his raw wood to to get into the process of wood carving. And he specializes in different types of birds. And uh, what a what a great person. And I made that tin type um, at his house uh, a few weeks ago. Natural light. That's a seven second exposure. And he held still pretty good. You can go to the next one. So this this is the person I met earlier, Dick Cliver. What a what an interesting interesting guy. And he is a sculptor and has a foundry in his yard and he sculpted uh, a, a cast. Um, I think those are bronze, bronze uh, uh, sculptures. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm already forgetting because we spent so much time talking that day. Um, but that's, that, that's a stone wall in front of his house. Um, and uh, what a body of work this guy has created. Um, and those two uh, um, sculptures in his wall he, he, he made. Next. So this is uh, out, out in front of the studio here. Um, just this, it, it, the project also, the pro I, I have so many projects I wanna do. This is kind of branched off into kind of tintype street photography. Um, this was, uh, I think it was the weekend of the Salmon Festival. And this is a really nice woman from Truscott, I believe she's a painter. Kristen put me in touch with her as a point of contact to talk to. And she came by to say hello with her daughter and I believe the daughter's partner and I was able to capture them outside and uh, it was really fun. She's, she's been a great contact for me meeting people as well. Next. And oh, so this is what I do as part of some of my work too. This is the back of the plate. So one of the things I do is I try to create like a folk art type uh, feel to my work. So I, I, I black varnish um, found objects. So this was a tin can and I created the image, the previous image of Leslie and her family on, on this plate. So this is the back just showing that, you know, I can, I'm just trying to do different things. So this is the very colorful Eastport character and artist, uh, jewelry maker, sculptor, Drew. Um, he's really interesting to, to shoot. He, this guy could stand still uh, like a rock for, for, for a minute if I asked him to. And he was always generous with his time and always ready to shoot. And I'd say, hey, Drew, come on, let me, let me take your image. And so this is in, uh, him in front of his studio space down the street. And yeah, so I mentioned earlier, I've been, you know, I came here with the mindset to, to, to work and, and, and shoot. And, and I just, the local art center, um, the Eastport Art Center, um, I came across, I, I guess their flyer or something, they were having a band come into town. I, I've already forgotten where these folks were from, but I saw their website and they dress up in, you know, kind of vintage clothing and they play acoustic music and they are extremely talented, uh, really talented musicians and really nice. And I just reached out to them and 
you know, they were completely down to shoot. And I said, Hey, let's meet in two hours. And, and they were doing a couple different things, setting up and they ran down to meet me and got dressed up and let me shoot them. And we made some really nice images down on the, uh, on the waterfront. Their name is uh, Ruchi Tucci. They're really good. So this is just, um, you know, shooting around town, the cargo terminal, and uh, I, I put this up because I just wanted to brag that I was able to make a tintype. For all my fellow wet platers out there, uh, making a tintype of clouds is extremely difficult because of the long exposure uh, due to the insensitivity of the collodion. Uh, you need a long expo exposure and thus clouds disappear, they go bright. And this day was just uh, dumb luck, and I was able to catch capture some some serious clouds. And and uh, you can see the foreground is dark because of the short exposure I had to take, but I was still able to capture some detail. So I really <laughs> like this plate. And then I went. I think the next image I think is more clouds. Since then I got cloud crazy, and uh, I I think the next one I was able to capture clouds again, which this is really. Again, I mean, it's a cool image, but it's not like anything spectacular, but except for the fact that if, you know, I got clouds on a, on a tintype, which is pretty cool and difficult. So the next one, oh, so this is, you know, another, like I said, I branched out and just started shooting around, um, the waterfront here is, is spectacular and, and never ending images, uh, interesting things to shoot. So this is on a circular plate. Um, it, it's a pier and it was really bright that day. So this was a tough image to capture too. And, and, and the plate actually looks better in, perfect, uh, in person. It's kind of bright here, but this is a circular plate. Again, trying to give a little twist, uh, trying to make my work a little different. And then next image shows the back of this plate. And it's Maine. <laughs> and yeah, so I have these hokey uh, trays. Uh, I think this started life as like a bar uh, a serving tray. And I cut it up, uh, cut off the lip and cleaned it up. And I put black varnish because you need a black background in order to see the tin type. And I can make an image. I built an insert uh, for my camera um, and I can insert that into my camera and make an image on this. So I have them and it came out really nice. I'm really, it was a lot of work. This, this, this was a lot of work, but I'm, I'm really proud of it. This is, this, this, this to me was one of the better images I, I, I've taken since I've been here. The, the, if you saw this plate in, in you know, real life, it, it, the exposure is really actually perfect. Um, you know, I mean, the composition is interesting too, and it's really cool old beat up eroded pilings and a pier, I guess. And it, the exposure is really, really good. and really came out well. I'm really like, this might be one of my, I don't know top plate since I've been here due to the technical, you know, the exposure, which is not easy in wet plate in, in tin types. So then I started going crazy about the weirs. Um, I'm endlessly fascinated by these weirs. Uh, this is, I just found out about this weir the other day. Somebody mentioned it to me um, weeks ago and, and I went searching for it. But in Eastport, they have crazy tides. The tides change, I think, 20 something feet a day, low and high tide. So apparently I was driving by this at uh, high tide and it's not really there. You only see the tips. So I went back and asked this guy again, hey, where's that weir? And this is, uh, I'm not, an, I don't know about weirs. I, this is used to catch fish because the fish come in with the tide and then it's circular and they can't get out. So I guess what, it's a passive way to catch fish maybe. Um, 
So now I'm crazy about weirs. And if I had another month, I would probably shoot this weir every day in changing light and from different angles. It's just endlessly, endlessly interesting to me. And I'm so glad I got to shoot this yesterday. I made that plate. And that's the back of the plate, again, showing found objects. I guess this, I think this was like an Amish pretzel jar. So not really a correlation to Eastport weirs, but um, you know, it's just kind of trying to keep things interesting. And this is the back of a plate that I took. I think the next image is, is, is another weir probably. Yeah, so that's that same weir I made on a circular plate um, with a different camera. And you, you can see that uh, this camera has a different lens. I'm in, I'm in pretty much the same spot as the other image, but look at how much further um, um, the weir is. is. And uh, these circular plates are a lot of work. So it's nice to work hard on something, really hard on something and get something that, that you enjoy. And this is another part of that weir. Apparently there's like a straight part of this circular weir and I, I, it's got something to do with funneling the fish into it, but uh, and it, I don't know. Um, but this is this same area of, of the other circular weir. Oh, I, that's why I showed this one because I just like this can. So that's the back of the plate. It's an old, uh, you know, tobacco tobacco can that I made an image on. And yeah, as you can see, I really like this weir. Same weir later on in the day, changing light. This is the uh, pier here across the street. Um, yeah, I like this. This was, I think, a foggy morning, so it's kind of got a nice mood to it. And yeah, this is pilings and a weir. Uh, this is that low tide. I shot out there a long time. And um, I like this because again, with the changing changing um, tides. Yeah, so I think that might be it, yeah. Wow, time flies, huh? It does. So I see some folks um, clapping in the distance. Um, if, if anyone oh, has great. questions Thank you. for John, um, now is a great time to unmute yourself and ask questions. You're welcome to also use the chat if that's easier or comments that you have. Um, we'll open it up. Hey, John, how are you? It's Marla. Hi, Marla, how are you? Thanks so much for joining. Great, these are really beautiful, John. Um, I was Thank wondering, how big much. are they? Are these like all different sizes? Yes, yes, that's a, that's a very good question. They are, they, it's interesting when you scan them and look at them on a computer screen, they look giant. Um, some of them, <laughs> most of them are like five by seven. Oh, the wow. circular plates are big. The circular plates are big. This, they're, I think they're 10 inch diameter. Oh so God, it's big. Gorgeous. When I'm out there holding, mm -hmm. when I'm out there holding a circular plate, I mean, it's big. It's it's big. It, it the chemistry is just flowing off. It makes a mess. Um, <laughs> it's un, it's 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 wieldy to hold. Mm -hmm. um, it's heavy and it cre it it takes a lot to just hold it, and. Um, but the five by sevens, you can do it in your hand, no problem. Um, and some of them might have been eight by ten. But um, right now, um, everything is ten inches and under. Oh that wow! You, that that's you've a, seen on this slideshow, yeah. Right, that's amazing. I know the only ones I had seen the the old ones have been very small. I guess obviously it was so yes. much easier to do it in like a tiny format for just like little pictures and things they had. 
So this is all the same like historical techniques they would have used whenever they were originally doing it? Yes, yes. Um, yes, wet plate collodion is from the 1850s tintypes. Um, contemporary mm -hmm. wet platers, they use, you know, 9.99 times out of 100, they are using um, for their substrate, they're not using tin, they're using aluminum, which obviously wasn't available in the 19th century. Um, but you can use aluminum. Um, it's called a trophy plate. And I shoot aluminum too. Mostly I try to use it for, for test shots. Um, they're cheaper, you know, easier to work with because um, they're flat, they're really flat. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I've gotten into what's, what's called, you know, I said before, black uh, varnishing my own plates. So um, it's just another uh, step in the process. It makes life way more difficult, um, <laughs> but it makes a better, it makes a better image. Um, when you have good black background, you have better whites. Mm -hmm. When you have better blacks and better whites, you have better contrast in your image and it makes a better image. Um, so most of the images I showed on, on this slideshow, you know, you really can't tell, but, but they're, um, they're true tintypes. Mm -hmm. And for example, those circular plates, there's no way you could shoot an image on those circular plates unless you apply, unless you black varnish them yourself because they're so dirty and they're so messed up. You need to mm -hmm. scrape off all the old stuff and, and shoot on them. But you could shoot on glass, you could shoot on clear glass, you could shoot on colored glass. Um, those are called amber types. Those were also made in the 19th century. Um, but yeah, I've been mostly been shooting tin types since I've been here. So um, that's a really good question. Thanks for asking. So I'm actually planning to head to um, Lubeck, which is 30, 45 minutes from here, which is another waterfront, um, um, old waterfront, main, very main uh, little town. Um, and they have a beautiful, beautiful, uh, like spectacular, how pretty it is. Um, old sardine uh, smoke museum and Ooh. I want to go down there and shoot it's it's old like smokehouse wooden sheds that kind of come out into the water and I I was in that area two years ago and it really resonated with me and I made some contacts thanks to Kristen over um, at the gallery in Lubeck and at the museum and I'm gonna go down there and shoot for two weeks um, But, you know, to be honest, I never really got images that I liked. I did black and white and I did dark room work. And then I came across an article on John Coffer, who is a tintype uh, photographer who basically revived tintypes uh, in the 80s and uh, extremely talented artist. And I was lucky enough to study uh, with John and assist him for the last three years. And tintypes always resonated with me. Um, because I actually, it, it's a lot of work. It's insane how much work it is. Um, you know, this is not a digital process at all, especially the way I do it. It's hands-on, completely analog. But tintypes, you can shoot an image. Um, you can shoot an image with a tintype and you can see what you have in 15 minutes. So I can set up my camera and set up my dark box and get all my chemistry out and pour a plate and make an image. And I know if A, the composition is interesting, uh, B, if I messed up or not, you know, and I have to reshoot and, and if I didn't get the exposure right, but I see what I have. When you shoot film, uh, you know, I, I'm talking about analog processes, not obviously not digital, but if you shoot film, you know, you, shoot, you go out, you shoot a roll of film, 36 exposures, black and white, even if you're developing it yourself, you know, if you're hands on and you have a dark room and you develop, um, it's going to take you time to see what you have a day later, uh, if, you, if you're really diligent, or weeks later, if you send it out to the lab and, and you get your roll of film back. So the scene is gone, right? It's gone. It's, it's you know, you probably missed it. Maybe you got three good, three good three good photographs in, in a roll of 36. And with wet plate, 
you know, maybe I'm, I'm impatient, right? Maybe I want that instant, <laughs> I want that instant gratification. I want to see what I'm making. And that really works for me. That really, really, really works for me. Um, that we are, you know, I shot seven plates that day. And you know, actually, I probably shot like 12 plates that day. And seven were, seven were keepers. And I like that. I like that you can make adjustments, you can change, you know, you can make adjustments and, and make images right when you're out there. And uh, the tinkering aspect, you know, uh, working on exposures, working on development. And uh, yeah, that, so yeah, that's, that's why it really works for me. So I develop with um, standard, it's a standard um, developer. It's uh, an iron sulfate, ferrous sulfate, and that was used in the, in, in the wet plate period. Um, and the, there's a restrainer in there, uh, acetic acid, which is basically vinegar. So you need iron sulfate to, to, to further reduce um, the silver salts into metal. You're creating metal on the plate. That's what you look at when you see the photograph, uh, the tintype when it's done. So yeah, it's a it's an iron sulfate developer.